Oh, no, that's it's Betty White's 99th birthday. I didn't know that. <laughs> it's a big deal. No, it's a big deal. That's the start of the show today. Noteworthy. <laughs> Guys, it's Betty White's 99th birthday. <laughs> She's still here. We're praying for one more year at least. It's, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm definitely going to talk about the fact that there's always a song in my head. Oh, yeah. And, and do you get one completely stuck too? Oh, completely. What's that called? Earworm? Right, Earwig. So? Ear- Ear- <laughs> Earwig. <laughs> song. Earworm. Earworm. Ew. <clears throat> okay. Yes, an earworm is a term used to describe a song that gets stuck in your ear or head. Ah. Or it's something on a corn cob. Oh, yeah. What's that picture? I don't know. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Bright Connections. I'm your host, VK. Joining me, family is back again. My cousin, Chris, and her husband, Joe, is joining her this week. Uh, and we're going to talk all about music and what it means to us and how it's influenced our life and just the power of music in general. So, guys, thanks for joining. How are you? Good. Thanks for having us. Doing great. You Happy you? to be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So... Uh, before we get started, obviously, going to do a little recap uh, following last week. Uh, we had a little bit of an NFL uh, update to do. So uh, we had the first round games of the NFL playoffs uh, that you know concluded. So we've got, uh, <clears throat> let's see here, the Ravens beat the titans which i believe i was incorrect in saying i had the titans going on in that one so that was already one wrong uh (coughs) did have the saints beating the bears and that was a pretty easy one there they beat them pretty pretty easily uh tampa bay beat washington which i believe i predicted as well uh that one was closer than than i kind of thought though it ended up being 31 23 so washington hung with tampa bay uh, the Bills beat the Colts, which I predicted, but that was another close one, 27-24. Uh, then a big upset, though, in the first round was the Rams, L.A. Rams beating the Seahawks. I don't think a lot of people had that. I don't think a lot of people had that. The Rams were on, like, their backup quarterback and all kinds of stuff going on, and the Seahawks were one of the top teams all year and ended up going in the playoffs. So, <laughs> but – and then there's the Steelers. Uh, Steelers. <laughs> and there's the Steelers. What the heck's going on there? I don't know. So I had, I guess in a way I had the prediction, right? I said they were going to lose, you know, by 30, but I didn't think that would be in the first quarter. <laughs> They'd be <laughs> losing by 30. Oh, that was bad. It was just bad, bad, bad. Got some stuff. What was to, the score? Uh, 48-37. The defense that was the number one defense pretty much all year round gave up 48 points to the Browns. Wow. So that was fun. It was fun watching that, that game. Yeah. So much fun. <laughs> How much did you yell at the TV? Honestly, I, I didn't even really yell. Once we started going down right at the beginning, I was like, should I just turn this off? Just, just <laughs> walk away. I, I left it on, but I ended up just like going around doing stuff and just leaving it on just to see if maybe there's a chance we'd, we started to come back, I guess, but not really. Not enough. <laughs> it's just, just bad. Just bad. So, which means we've got um, our divisional round matchup set. Uh, obviously, this will come out after the games again, but we'll just go over who we have left. So, we've got the Bills playing the Ravens, the Packers playing the Rams, the Chiefs playing the Browns, and the Saints playing the Buccaneers. So, we're down to eight teams in the NFL. Um, and pretty much all the teams that we're fans of are out. I'm a Steelers fan. Joe said he's a Giants fan, which, you know, they got real far in the playoffs too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but Pretty it is what it is. The NFC East. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Goodness gracious. You guys are in talks for the, for the division title for a while though. 
at what yeah. like six and ten. Three. Yeah, something ridiculous. <laughs> Just needed the Eagles to lose, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That big whole controversy at the end. If they, if the Eagles would have won, right? If the Eagles would have won, you guys would have been in. I don't honestly they, remember. Yeah, I think that's what it was. That if the Eagles would have won, you guys would have been in. And the Eagles end up putting like a bunch of backups in at the end of the game. <laughs> Basically blowing yeah. it. Any season's a good season when we beat the Cowboys. Hmm. That's, that's how anything you can happen. Yeah, yeah, we beat the Cowboys. That's all I really care about. That's all that matters. Nice. That's yeah. kind of that's kind of how it is with the Steelers and the Ravens. If they, if, yeah, like I said, at least in our family, if the Steelers beat the Ravens, even if it's not a great year, uh, we beat the Ravens. So it's it's fine. But <laughs> check that block. Yeah. <clears throat> but so we've got our teams now set for the next round. Yeah, we're getting closer to to the championship in the NFL playoffs. Woohoo! Uh, then we also had the start of the NHL season. Uh, a couple games in now, <clears throat> and another Pittsburgh team hot off the start. Penguins, Penguins do uh, you know, losing their first two games to the Flyers. Really? Oh yeah. Uh-uh. Oh yeah. So not a hot start there either. And you were so excited. Oh, yeah. Aww. Especially like right after the Steelers lose, too. You know, the Steelers lose, like, oh, it's all right. We got the Penguins not out to cheer on and, and everything. And then a couple of days later, first game, loss. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> Two days later, oh, that loss again. Great. Now, we will, I will give it to the Flyers are a good team. Um, Flyers are a good team, but didn't look so great. Penguins didn't look so great. Maybe again, hopefully. It's a long season. You've got some stuff just to figure out and get some chemistry worked out, but you never want to start out looking pretty bad, but <laughs> it is what it is. So we See got, what happens. Yep, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but um, funny little thing, uh, a guy at work, he's a huge Capitals fan and obviously the Penguins and the Capitals are, are big rivals. So he, uh, he comes up to me one day and most, most people around this area, you know, are Penns fans and everything. So uh, two other people that he works near um, kind of strum up a bet with him. And so I, I was there the one day in, in, in their office or in their room. And uh, you know, he's like, do you want to, you want in on this, on this bet that we have? And I was like, Oh geez, what? And he's like, all right. So obviously I'm a Cavs fan. You guys are all Penns fans. So we're going to do our head to head. Whoever wins more games you have to wear the other team's jersey for the day. So if, if the Caps, so we play each other eight times during the year. Uh, so whoever wins more out of those eight, obviously if it's a tie, we have tiebreakers set and everything, but whoever wins more out of those games, um, if the Caps win more, the three of us all have to wear Caps, uh, Caps jersey. If he loses, he has to wear a Penn's jersey for three days. So... <laughs> Just the just a fun little thing, just to make it interesting, you know. And so you have the jerseys. That's to what I was going to say. Do you yes. have to go out and buy one or no? Okay. He, yeah, he has them. He has them. That's okay. what I said. I was like, I'm, I, I don't have a Caps jersey, that's for sure. And it's like, no, nah, I got some for. They're me. not cheap. Yeah. So all, he has to provide for all three. If my goodness, he must have a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, unfortunately. And is I, he I, winning so far? We haven't played yet. We haven't played. That first game is oh, actually, just your head-to-head games. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Not whoever like finishes higher in the standings or anything. Just the head-to-head pens and and capitals. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the first game. Well, first game will be today. Yeah. First game is actually today, I believe, or maybe tomorrow. I can't even remember now. But um, I, I'm getting a little nervous already with the way we started this season. <laughs> I was like, oh, great. And I, I, I made a joke to him. I said, you know, if you, uh, you have me one of your jerseys, you never know what's going to come back at. <laughs> Maybe just a pile of ashes. <laughs> you could cut it into a snowflake, you know, like fold it and <laughs> make some origami make out of it. Yeah. <clears throat> or uh, like tape, tape penguins names and, and icons over the, over the jersey and stuff. Yes. Change, yes. It, change it into a pen's jersey. Yeah. Just shrink the hell out of it. <laughs> and the back is like an extra small. Like, <laughs> just, I don't know what happened, bro. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I tried. I just tried to wash it for you to get it back to you clean. I don't know what happened. 
My dryer is extra strong. But, <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So. So. Fun little uh, sports updates here. So exciting times. Exciting, you know. Anytime it's it's the playoffs in, in any league, it's always fun. Even if even if your team's not in, you'd still it's still fun, at least for me, to pay attention to it and see who's doing well. And you know, and then obviously with the with the start of the NHL season, that's always a, a good time for me too. So mm-hmm. all right, let's talk about music. We love music. Absolutely love music. We're kind of like music maniacs, huh? Yes. Yeah. All the time. Uh, all the time. Get it stuck in your head all day long, singing. Um, but, I mean, the, the power of music uh, is just amazing. I mean, the, the amount of influence and, and effect that music has on you, even on a day-to-day basis, is just, it's incredible. I mean, if you can, if you could, if you're in a bad mood and you listen to the right song, it puts you in a good mood. If you're, if you're working out, you got music to pump you up. If you got sad music and you want to just kind of sit there and, and think and reflect you get music for that it's just there's so much that music can do um you know it's just it it it's so powerful it's so powerful yeah absolutely you just want to like you said if you just want to be in one of those moods where you're just kind of grumpy or like in your head and you just put on the right music and just kind of just accept it and just go with it and have it feed your mood. Exactly. Or you can use it like if you want to get out of that mood and you're on your way to work and you blast like the most amazing things and just get your head on straight to have an awesome day, you know? Exactly. It it's so important. And I'll notice sometimes I'll be in a funk and I'll be like, what is my problem? Because I like to listen to like audiobooks and other things on my, on my phone while I'm getting ready. And I'm like, that's it. I have not even listened to like any good music lately and I'll change and I'll get you know, I'll start doing that. And I'm like, okay, that's what was missing. What was I doing? I know better than this. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And there's, there's been days when I, when I go to work and I either my, I like forget my, my iPod or um, it dies or iPod? something. Yeah. I still use an iPod actually. <laughs> you say iPod? I do. You have to, like, okay. rotate your fingers. Speaking of this guy has disc CD books in his car. So he cannot say one word. You have to get, when you go in to ride with him, you got to put that big old book in the back seat. <laughs> that's his passenger at all times. It's ridiculous. So don't talk about that. Nice try. I nice try. A long time. I thought I was the only one. <laughs> yeah. No, I still do. My pod touch. I still do. Yeah. I just, I mean, I have all my music on there and it's, it's my music. If I tried to do my phone, I, I just have, I have an Android, so I don't have all my, all my music's on Apple. And I, if, you know, I wouldn't be able to put, too much or you know that much music on there and i just i just fire away on my ipod thousands of songs and just let it shuffle through all day long um but i yeah i have i've forgotten or my ipod has died at work and it just absolutely just ruined my day i was like oh, i'm not gonna get through the day now i just <laughs> I, gotta can't go do home. I gotta go home guys i basically just like sick you know just might as well just <laughs> mentally not here mental health day i gotta Ment- check out early exactly checking out i'm done can't do it <laughs> um, yeah, I always, I always sit there with my music playing at work. It's just the way it is, just the way it is. And, and not even at work, but all the time. I mean, I come home, music going, um, in the car, obviously music going. Just, Don't you too? Like you always have yours. People like, <laughs> what was the thing at work? People just like hear you singing. Oh or- yeah, all the time. Tell your story. Yeah, I've been I've been told to uh, not told to, but mentioned that. Oh man, what are you still humming over there? Saying uh, quietly, saying to yourself at work and stuff. Yeah, I've, I've been mentioned <laughs> humming and humming and singing. Um, even even when I'm when I'm playing my video games too, sometimes I'm humming or singing or whistling or something like that. Or like like BK, stop! <laughs> I, can't, I can't hear you're whistling or humming or whatever. I was like, oh, sorry, didn't even realize. I, yes. I, do it, I do it without even realizing I'm doing it. It's just second nature. But. Yeah, this whole family, because, okay, so for those of you who don't know us, we have two girls who are very musically inclined as well. They both sing, play guitar, ukulele, blah, blah, blah. So between the three of them, someone is always singing or belting out something. I can always hear it from the house. You sing too. <laughs> I do sing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, don't leave yourself um, out. More, <laughs> yeah, well, more lately. I've been just singing random things. But, and then... Yeah. Um, 
But this one I can always find because he whistled. Like if we go shopping together, I can find him in the store because I always hear him whistling. And I don't even think you notice that you do it, but I'll be like, I'll start to be like, oh, I should call him. And then I'm like, Wait, oh yeah, he's right over there. <laughs> so it's like a find your phone app on. Yes. Or find yes. your car app on the phone and instead of uh-huh. find your husband just by the whistle. Nice. Yeah, it never fails. That's great. That's a good way to not to get lost. <laughs> Joe, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> I hear him. I hear him. Nice. Um, but I mean, just music in general just connects people. Um, and that's what we're, we're all about is just making the connections any way we can. And, you know, obviously we don't have concert right, concerts right now, but when we did, uh, you know, it's just bringing it just a huge group of people with the same, same love of, of music together and just having a blast, having a blast. I mean, it brings up conversation music does, uh, it brings groups of people together. It helps you, you know, find common interests with each other and just have something to talk about and something to share, share a love of. And what would the world be without music? <laughs> Scary it would thought. Be a dark place. Scary yes. thought. Quiet. Very quiet. Very quiet. And like, I don't know. I have a, like less, maybe five or less friends, but there are those ones that know the music that I love and we, we share the same interests. So we're always texting out songs. Have you heard this yet? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's even if we haven't talked in a month, I'll get a random song and I check it out and I'm like, oh, I got new music. And I get so excited, you know, yep. just finding new bands and yeah. And, sh- and when I find something that's amazing to share it and like to hear their excitement on the other end, I'm like, oh, yes, <laughs> we got something new. <laughs> yep. Yep. I don't think there would be anything. We wouldn't communicate vocally if there wasn't music. It's just a natural, you know, it's the natural next step of talking. Yeah. In my opinion. So yeah. If, if we didn't have music, then we must be communicating some way non-verbally, like I don't know. Just facial cues or whatever. But Maybe. Yeah. Sign language. Sign language. Yeah. Yeah. It'd definitely be it'd be crazy. It'd be absolutely crazy without it. Um now speaking of influence, uh music has. A little story of how you guys met in little you guys met over music. Huh? Kind of story of of your guys meeting or? Oh, when he when he would be playing at the bars and stuff. Yeah, when we first got together, um, he would be playing open mic nights at bars around our college town, and I'd be working there. I was a bartender, and he would be playing, and it was it's just I fell in love. I'd invite all my friends, and and I'd just be sitting there like mm. <laughs> <laughs> just googly, googly eyed, like oh. He's- so cute and he can sing he can sing yeah yep. and, and and it was just always we were hanging out he was always playing and strumming music and we'd be around fires or just in the living rooms or wherever we were yep. take that thing out camping and always singing and we just sit on the porch swing and play me songs play you know me songs. <laughs> i just want to lay here just play me some songs and it was great and it was we always had music it was the yep. best yeah power of music it even even yeah. even goes all the way to love. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now you mentioned also that you have uh, two two daughters that are very musically inclined. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of wanted to to go over what that is like. Um, what's it like like having to to teach them and and you know what what it takes to be able to you have to have kids that are very into music and, and want to, you know, uh, try to have a musical career of some sort. What's it like? Mm-hmm. You want to take that one? Well, I bought Dylan. Dylan's 15 now. I bought her her first guitar and she was two. Two or three. I was in Iraq and I ordered her off Amazon, had it sent to the house. And uh, with this idea that she was becoming you know, Jimi Hendrix while I was gone. And (laughs) all she wanted to do was beat on it. And when I got home, she didn't want anything to do with guitar. And uh, it was very frustrating. And uh, her boss, what's her name? Annette. Annette. In Wachuca, years later, I don't know, Dylan was probably... Seven or something, eight. Yeah, somewhere around there. Gave her a three-quarters 
acoustic guitar. So a shorter, smaller acoustic guitar, bigger than the guitar I got her. My guitar was a, almost a toy. It was a real guitar, but it was pink and it had animals on it. And yeah. Anyway, she gave her a legitimate, more legitimate guitar. And all of a sudden she decided, uh, no, she still didn't want much to do with it until we got to Hawaii. She messed with it, but it's she, hard to like, she wouldn't teach, she didn't really want to learn from him. You know how no. it is. It's different when it's a parent, Yeah. you know, and, and the patients with each other is like, uh, so if someone outside would come in, it's like, almost like she was more willing, you know, but like the two of them all butted heads over it. It wasn't until she was um, becoming a young woman, maybe mm-hmm. that when she started voice and stuff. Well, was, she had started voice long before that. Wow. She finally picked the guitar up in Hawaii, and at that point, she was in junior high, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, somewhere in there, that she just kind of took off with it. And we'd sit on the back porch, and I'd show her things and show her chords, and she couldn't play bar chords forever. And we'd have a good couple of songs, and she'd get super frustrated because she couldn't do something yet. And yeah. it all, yeah, we'd storm off, and a couple <laughs> days later, she knows how to do that thing now because she was tired of not being able to do it. Right. Before long, she's playing at the talent shows, singing, and now she's got all her music online and learns a new song. It feels like, I don't know, every day. Yeah. And, um, way past anything. I Everything she's learned probably in the last, I don't know, two, three years has been her on her own. You know, once, once the spark was ignited, it was uh, her own thing. Yeah. She just took it and ran with it. Now, Maya, I can't get Maya. Maya's in that same boat. She don't want anything really to do with ukulele or at least with ukulele and me. She did in Hawaii when she was taking lessons and it was right. more yeah. practice thing. But now that it's, you know, she doesn't have the motivation to go and pick it up as much. I imagine if, if we push it on her a little bit, little bits here and there, she'd probably pick it up here in a couple of years. If, if it's something she wanted to do, right? you know, but. But she wants to be a professional singer anyway. So I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who doesn't? That's all she needs in her mind. Yeah. Yeah. So. Right. Both have big dreams in that department. Yeah. And I can't teach them anything <laughs> singing wise because there are already better, way better singers than I am than I ever will be. So I learn more from them not at this point then which is kind of cool for me watching because like now that dylan's really taken off with it i can see like she'll play a song and he's over there trying to like i don't know not match it but play along with it just kind of strumming and doing his thing and i'm like look at this it's kind of a role reversal like and it's not all the time like he's still obviously teaching her stuff and they play stuff together right but then when i see that i'm like that's kind of cool yeah almost the the uh Pupil becoming the master a little bit, or <laughs> at least yeah. becoming closer to. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Joe, you mentioned that it was obviously frustrating at first uh, trying to get Dylan into into music and and into playing guitar and stuff. So, how much does it take for you as a parent to kind of just continue to persist? Obviously, you want them; you they have to have the desire to do it too, but. But obviously, as, as parents, you guys have to continue to just motivate them and motivate yourself to continue to push them as well, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think for, for guitar, for Dylan, it wasn't like, how do I say it? It wasn't going to, it wouldn't, I didn't intend it to like change her life or anything. You know, I want, I would love to, for when she was very young, that was my dream one day to be able to grow up, grow up. And, uh, <laughs> still growing up play yeah. music play music with my kids and um she didn't want anything to do with it and i yeah i pushed her a little bit but i was never adamant about it never like you're gonna sit here and practice for two hours today but no it, do what you want to do like when i learned how to play guitar it was because i wanted to do it i was 13 and i just i got the bug and it went with it and i can see her she has the bug same as i did pretty much at this point now but back when, when she was younger and wasn't as much into it, it, you know, I decided earlier on, well, I was kind of, somebody decided for me early on. (laughs) She's going to do what she wants to do. And if we just push it on her and force her to do it, it's not going to be fun. As soon as they find fun in it, that's when it's, you know, 
That's when um, it'll grow. It's like we, we started climbing recently and they both took off, both the girls. I expected some major complaining and lots of drama and they hit the rock and they just went at it. And it was, it was pretty awesome to see how, how quickly they both adapted to it and just loved it. Um, had we started that years earlier, probably not, you know. It would have been too scary. Yeah. Or, so, so they have to be ready. It's so kind it's, of it like is, are they ready? And Dylan wasn't ready when I first wanted her to be, which was really unrealistic of me because a two-year-old can't even wrap their hand around <laughs> You're like, Dad, it hurts my yeah. hand. Yeah, but by the time she was 12, 13, in there, 14, yeah, she she was rocking with it. It's more it's more of the presenting the opportunity to your kids yeah. and and just leaving the option out there. Um, obviously, like you said, it's it's your dream for them to be able to do it too, but obviously it still has to be their dream as well. Yeah, getting them to buy in. Yeah. You know? If they want to do it, then they'll do it. If they don't want to do it, you force it on them. It's, it, it's not fun. It's, it's just another chore. Yeah. It's just another homework assignment. Right, know? right. Right. I mean, and that would, you could also say the same thing for, for sports. You know, you got these parents out here that, that from right off the bat, they're like, oh, my kid's going to be a superstar in this sport. Well, you know, maybe that's not, you know, you can, you could obviously you have to, because at a young age, kids don't really know exactly what, what, what everything is. Like at least you get out there and they're just running around on a field. They just think they're playing. They don't realize that it's a sport, you know, that it's, it is what it is. And you have to be there and you kind of have to push them a little bit to say, you know, we're going to soccer practice today and, and they kind of are like, okay, you know, but they have to, like you said, they have to eventually just on their own, on their own, they have to develop that love of it. And then once they do, then, you know, as parents, you continue to just push them along and, and support them and everything. And it becomes, it becomes a career you know, as, as instead of a hobby, like you imagined it, just, you know, playing with, with your girls, it be, kind of becomes more than that. And that's an amazing, yeah. amazing thing to see. So, yep. yeah. Um, and then you also, you also talked about, you know, how they've, they are, especially Dylan has picked up this, this guitar and how she's you know, started learning stuff on her own and, and just want to know how, how proud it makes you Sing, I don't sing. know. There's not really words, you know. Like I said, that that was a dream I had. That was a dream I had probably before I was even before I was even married. I'd love to, you know, grow up in a family that was hugely into music and and be able to play music, you know, with my kids. And uh, my wife would pick up the guitar and stop BSing. And. Uh, <laughs> He tried to teach me when we were in Germany before we had Dylan, when we had all the time in the world. And I dabbled and then I was like, it's so much work and it hurts my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, maybe it was Sunday. But yeah, it was a, it was a literal a dream. And when she finally started playing and we would play on the back porch in Hawaii, it was, I couldn't, I don't know. We're on the beach. On the beach, uh, the here, down in the basement, you know, where, wherever it happened, like I really, can't think of much many more times in life that I was much happier. I mean, there are a few, but yeah. definitely highlight of my week. I, I made a joke a while back, 40, 41. Like, what are your friends? What are you doing on a Friday night? Like, well, I'm just excited. We were coming back from uh, the, the spur ride in Hawaii and Dylan had plans. She was going out with her dance friends or her, her voice lesson friends and whatnot. Uh, everybody's talking about what they're going to do because the unit's on a, on a big high. We just got done with a huge training event and everybody's excited for the weekend. And I hear all the younger guys talk, oh, we're going to Waikiki. We're going to North Shore. We're going to do this, da, da, da. And I, it's like, I'm just bummed because my daughter's not going to be home to hang out and play music with me this weekend. <laughs> like, and they all looked at me like I was crazy. And I'm like, I'm not too worried about what you think. But yeah, yeah that, that's the extent. I'm just going to be hanging out at home pretty much. I'm a fan. I'm a family man now. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying to get the emotional side out of him, Kristen. Yeah. <laughs> it's in there. It's in it's there. It's in there. Yep. Um, and then just, especially with, with your girls, I always think about 
and then obviously seeing other other people on on social media and, and whatnot and youtube and everything and just the amount of talent that kids have these days is astounding to me absolutely amazing like yeah. young age they're just they're doing stuff that it's just for me it's mind-blowing because i i never imagined um one being able to do something like that and two even thinking about doing something like that like when i was that young like 10 or 12 right i wasn't thinking about like a, a musical career or putting stuff out there on youtube and just trying to get people to notice and stuff i was just climbing trees or doing something else stupid and um it's just it's playing knee hockey play knee exactly play knee hockey <laughs> yep um and it sounds just, unbelievably painful by the way <laughs> It, it can be. Yeah. It's unbelievably fun though, too. Uh, but just the amount of talent that kids have, it's just absolutely amazing to me. Yeah, it really is. And then I wonder like, is there more talent or are we just being exposed to it? Is it more available to us through all these different outlets, you know, or yes, they had it, but now that they have the push of seeing what others can do that some are even younger than them, is that like, Oh, all right, I got to kick it up because look what's out there and look what I, you know, what I could do and, and take someone else's creativity and their ideas and put it, you know, give it a little twist to what you already do, what you already know. I don't know, but it is, it's really incredible to see some of like the competitions and um, yeah, I agree. Just the, the amount of, <clears throat> especially, especially with singing, like even like when you see on on America's Got Talent or or other like singing competitions and stuff, these every once in a while you see these kids that are like seven years old and they're belting out like Celine Dion or something crazy, and you're just uh, what? How is that coming? <laughs> How is that coming out of this little body? It's yes, it's, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. So, yeah. um, now I think the social media spurns it on like. I played guitar with a, a kid in Iraq, Eric Burton. And I grew up, I told you, I started playing when I was 13. My parents paid for about six months, maybe a year of lessons. I don't really remember. But at some point I decided I knew everything there was to know about guitar and said, I don't need this guy anymore. And yeah, stupid me, but <laughs> taught me how to play stairway and that was all I needed. And I moved on. Um, this kid never took lessons, nothing. He got a guitar, he got an amp and he got YouTube. And he learned how to play guitar watching YouTube and the things he could do. Like he loved Stevie Ray. He loved him. To, and it's unfortunate because he didn't know that like quite a few Stevie Ray songs are actually Jimi Hendrix songs, but I had to educate him on that, but <laughs> he could kill some Stevie Ray. And it just blew my mind that he'd never taken lessons, never, you know, everything he learned was from YouTube. And uh, I feel like, yeah, seeing those YouTube videos or whatever's out there now that, you know, hey, this kid did this and that, you know, that gives this kid across the country, across the world, maybe an idea to try it just a little differently and try adding something into it. And, uh, one of the coolest things I've seen isn't a kid, but uh, a dude who plays uh, Last of the Mohicans, one of the songs from Last of the Mohicans on, a, I believe, like a cello, but then he has a guitar over here and he's got another stringed instrument over here and he's like throwing his arms around, just throwing, playing the, almost the entire orchestra piece on instruments himself it's like, how do you even think to do that you know yeah i know i've, I've seen but, this kind of videos before too like there, you've got this person have like there's a whole setup of different instruments and stuff and they and they have machines that are able to you start playing one and, and you capture it and then you put it on like repeat and stuff and it just it continues to play while you looper. play another thing and yeah looper and it just it's it's crazy and it's so cool to yeah. see you're just you're sitting there by yourself but it sounds like there's just a whole band or a whole group of people playing with you and it's 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 crazy it's awesome yeah have you seen our cousin dan's videos yeah that he posts and he does that he loops everything and he does he picks up bass picks up a guitar and then he's on his little i don't even know what a synthesizer or whatever and i'm just like what it's a concert in your room it's you have all concert. these things going yeah I'm like wow that's really cool it is it's so cool it's so cool. Yeah, Joe, Joe, you're absolutely right with just, I think with the knowledge uh, that's, that's available and the, like you said, that just seeing other people and what they're doing, it just, it's inspiring to, to others, you know, like you said, even around the world uh, that, you know, that they're doing that at a young age or whatever that I, I can do it too. Why can't I? And so that maybe, you know, that's one thing that good that comes out of all this social media and, and everything. There's some, there's some good comes out of it. Yeah. Shared ideas. Yeah. Yeah. 
So um, I wanted I wanted to talk talk a little bit about our personal musical abilities and maybe some some performances that that we've had uh, in our life just just for fun. Uh, so Joe, obviously you're you're fairly talented yourself, and you've uh, like you said you've played it at bars and stuff. Uh, is there anything else that you've like you've played? Have you played like in front of big crowds or anything like that, or, or is it just basically? I, I did talent shows and stuff, normal stuff like Dylan's done back in high school. Um, played with Nick at one time at that weird thing. I don't remember what it was. Like a VF, it was something weird. I had a church, a huge one. I led the praise team at multiple chapels and different duty stations in Iraq. Um, and that was everything from me and a guitar and singing to a full, full fledged band. Um, then, uh, bars. Yeah, definitely bars, <laughs> mic nights and whatnot in college. Yep. Um, everything to even actually had the honor of performing the national anthem at memorial ceremonies for soldiers. Um, really nice. That was probably the absolute most, most nerve wracking thing ever I've done in, uh, musically anyway but i think that's about it yeah remember when that guy was like dying at that concert didn't he like step up and play with a band or something or did i do uh, <laughs> what <laughs> in, in arizona uh, tombstone tombstone arizona they had some band there's just a old bunch of old guys playing a bunch of old rock classic rock they were awesome though. and this dude the bassist he was only like in his 50s, but dude looked like he was in his 70s or 80s. <laughs> he was so sick. He was just a lifetime of alcoholism and cigarettes and you name it. And, uh, I don't think he was dying, but I just think he was done. I, oh, think, I he, think he was like dying. No, <laughs> no I think he, he was left. Like dying. He got up, left. He his, left in the middle of the show. Oh, wow. His wife or girlfriend or whatever. I just took him and then he didn't have a bass player. So I just walked up and grabbed the bass and started playing with him. And, <laughs> Wow. It was fun. It was pretty cool. I mean, laying down a bass line is not terribly difficult if you know how to play guitar. But it was fun. <laughs> were they were, random stuff? Yeah. I was, well, I like it though. That's pretty cool. Like, were they, did they look at you or just like, who are you? What are you doing up here? Or were they, like, yeah, come on, get up here. And I think most of the places I've been, if, if, if you, if you hop on stage and you know what you're doing, that's all that kind of matters. You, so you know? didn't even say anything. You were just like, <laughs> I don't remember. Honestly, I got this. <laughs> I think I was the DD it was a weird thing. So I wasn't even drinking. And, um, I, I, yeah, I honestly think he stopped playing. He put the bass down. He left. They kept playing a few songs. I might've asked them you if they want a bass player like, hey. or I might've walked up mid song, grabbed the bass and started playing. <laughs> I, I honestly don't remember. I mean, that was, that was wow. six, seven, eight, maybe six. I don't know yeah. that many years ago. So yeah. that would be anyway, I got up there, played with them and it was fun. Yeah, I bet. Classic rock and blues. Nice. I bet that would be pretty funny that if you just walked up without saying anything, just pick it up and start playing. They just, they just turn and they're just like, yeah, let's do <laughs> you it. Got a good one. Yeah. Uh, that's 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 not unheard of at all. I mean, if if it's a especially like a so a lot of places like brew pub, they had like a jam night and it was literally bring your instrument, find a place to plug in, or don't even plug in and just play really loud and uh, <laughs> just make music just together. Join. And I remember walking in there one night and there must be 30 dudes between, and it was mostly bluegrass, you know, Morgantown and banjos, guitars, mandolins. Some dude had the big stand up bass. I swear there was a chick with clogs and just a big wooden box. She just got on top of him <laughs> with her feet. And, Clogging away at a box. Yeah, I swear, <laughs> yeah. But it's so cool like to see how things like that come together and what's created by just winging it, you know, just yeah. go at it. Jam. There's a lot of talent out there that goes unrecognized. A lot we did have a pretty, pretty badass drum circle in uh, Epcot Center <laughs> back when Dylan was what? You don't need to go any deep. Two, three. There's an area. What, I don't remember what country it is, but when you go around the countries on the outside of Epcot, one of the countries has a whole bunch of drums there and a bunch of percussion instruments, and we just started going to town. There might have been <laughs> a little bit of drinks and Germany serves yeah. Germany German beer. Serves, so yeah. Maybe have been. So we were revisiting maybe our um 
our European years. And, anyway, uh, the drums. It was pretty bad. I mean, we had quite a crowd when it was all done. Yeah. And me and her had a pretty good rhythm. We had all these different things. We were just, I don't even know what we were doing. Just having fun. And Dylan was probably completely off rhythm, just hitting anything that came into her, you know, within her arm's reach. But it was yeah. cool. And we get done, we're sweaty, we're out of breath, and we look up, and there's a good number of people out there, and they're clapping, and I don't know, maybe they thought we were employees. An know. actual, yeah, an act, an actual act, like, meant to be there. Nice. You just picked it. Yeah, this. pretty cool. That's pretty crazy, yeah. It's just interesting how things like that come together, and then you, it's just a moment, you know? Yeah, and that, and when you talked about the, you know, just picking up, just step somebody stepping up and going on stage and just picking it up. I mean, that's a really good point because if you think about it, anybody that's, that's going to like a, a musical venue of some sort, whether it be a bar or a concert or anything like that, you have to imagine that, uh, you know, a lot of the people that are there are obviously into music and probably a lot of them are musically talented or are able to play, you know, instruments and stuff. And it's always, it's always a possibility, you know, that, that there's somebody out there that, is able to, like you said, just jump up on stage and start playing. It's it's crazy to think about. Yeah, That's so, so cool. cool. It is. It really is. Hi, right, Chris. Hi, right, Chris. What have you done? What, what are your performances? Oh, I don't have any. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Cartwheels. Cartwheels. <laughs> Cartwheels. With Becky. I was the dancer. Uh, That's uh, right. You were a dancer. You were a dancer. Okay. Okay. He's more the visual performer. The auditory there you go how about you brian let's talk about your wonderful um so i haven't done anything like joe but you know the stuff that i have done um probably the first performance that i ever did was uh the mr upj competition at at school um it was the first time i really sang in front of people uh so basically what that was mr upj competition was like a how do you put it like a male pageant i guess if you will um so basically we had like different stages of what we did like a, a formal stage we walked out in like formal attire you had like a talent stage you had like a, a question stage and everything so for the talent thing i decided to do like a mashup song and i did like singing and dancing and in my and, and and by the way, my, my suit was just way too big for me at that time. So I'm just sitting there like floating in my suit, dancing and stuff. And every time I look back at the video, I just like, what was I doing? Is this video available online? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have seen it a hundred times? Yeah. Oh, I have. I think we can look back on his Facebook and see it. Probably. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I, I did dancing to oh, what was, oh, Gondam Style which was the popular song of yes. the time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, uh -huh. I can picture it all now. Uh -huh. I did that. And then I sang a portion of uh, Some Nights by Fun. And, but it was just, it was one of the, the first, it was, it was the first performance I ever did in front of people. And um, obviously I was super nervous, but it ended up going well. Obviously I, I ended up winning the competition. Um, and it was definitely one of the, the most memorable moments, moments of my life, you know, by far. And um, definitely a lot of fun looking back on it and <laughs> just performing in front of people. Wasn't always, it wasn't in my mind, something I, I was gonna do, you know, growing up. I, always, I was always singing growing up, but I never thought that I was gonna make anything out of singing. Um, but uh, so that was the first thing. And then now, um, I have kind of, I guess, made something out of singing. So uh, I am the cantor at my church. Um, so for those that don't know what that means, basically, you know, if you think about a, a normal Catholic church, you have like a choir or whatever. Now in my, in my church, I'm, I'm Byzantine Catholic and in our church. Um, so in Roman, in Roman Catholic, you kind of just have response, like the, you respond to the priest and it's more of just a simple response, almost like a, a, saying of the response but with a little bit of musical uh, aspect to it but in our church pretty much all the responses are singing they're almost like all of them are, are almost songs and so i'm the one that does all that and i'm doing it by myself and um so basically how that came about is our old cantor that we had started getting up there in age and we got a, a new priest a handful of years ago and they just kind of weren't meshing really well and in, in, you know, in addition to that, 
they got, you know, the, the canter was getting old and he was kind of just ready to retire. And so we didn't have a canter for a while. And so we just were singing in the, you know, in the crowd, in the congregation. And one day, I guess I was singing loud enough that the priest heard me singing and he came up to me after and he was like, yeah, you got a pretty good voice. Would you be interested in, in, in being the canter? And I was like, Oh, I don't know about that. You know, cause I, <laughs> I, I never did any performances or anything like that to sing in front of people. And I was, I'm, I'm nervous about it. And, and I, so I, I thought about it for a while and continued to say, yeah, people just say, yeah, why not? Just do it. Just do it. And the priest, you know, he was like, I think you can handle it. So eventually he, he pulled me aside and kind of just walked me through how to do it and everything. And I just jumped up, up there and, started doing it and it's been a blast. I absolutely love doing it. I love contributing to, to the mass. Uh, I love, I love contributing to, 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 to worship and praise, uh, you know, in, in the church. And I, I just, I feel like, I don't want to say I feel important, but I, you know, I feel like having a role, having a, a, a cause I was, I would always, um, you know, my dad's a, a usher in the church. And so when I started to go like a couple of years ago or a handful of years ago, I would, I would kind of start to join him too. So, you know, just like, I kind of want a, an extra role in the church, something else to do and, and contribute to uh, in addition to just going there for an hour and, and then leaving, you know, it's kind of want to get involved more. And uh, so now this came along and I, I'd say I'm pretty involved, especially, especially now in the pandemic time, uh, the, the congregation doesn't sing like everybody in the, in the crowd and everything doesn't sing. So it's just the priest and I sing so nobody, so normally, you know, in a normal, in a pre pandemic time, it's, it's me leading everybody, but now it's, it's only me. So I'm the only one singing all the responses and oh, stuff, wow. but, um, I, I really enjoy it. I do, uh, every, every Saturday night I go and I, I sing for hour, hour and a half. And, and I just, I love, it. it brings me a lot of joy. Like I said, contributing to it. And, um, I, I think it's gone really well. So. I love that. That's yeah. awesome. Must have felt weird first at first though, like when nobody can, no one else can sing. It's like, here's my solo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> can first... you all join me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The first. No. The f- no. <laughs> yeah. The first. The first week of of doing it without people was was kind of weird, but um, once you start, I mean, you start singing, you're not necessarily listening for other people, and so you just kind of you just keep going. If you don't think about yeah that nobody's singing with you it's really not too too bad as long as you just focus on your singing and just enjoy it and and you know make it what it is it's, it's usually fine but <laughs> yep yeah. so that's that's my that's my singing performances each week other than you know singing in the shower and whatnot <laughs> oh yes <laughs> People, what isn't there something that goes on at work when you should sing in the shower? People like come in and join him, or is it just when you're in your office? No, they they just give me a hard time, or not really a hard time. I sing in the shower. I take my phone in there. I've got, I gave up my iPod years ago because it just started dying. Um, more and more songs would just stop playing on it for whatever reason. Um, so I have, I do have like a three, 300 plus playlist on my phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just transferred it all over because I use iTunes too, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, I picked my favorite 300, however many songs, transferred them to my phone, downloaded an app. And I just, that's what plays my music pretty much all the time at work. I have a speaker, but I don't even really plug it in anymore because I have to pause it every five minutes. I have to pause it for something else, but I do yeah. take it in the shower and let it play and, <laughs> eventually end up singing along with it and I stopped giving it I showered at work for years now probably five six years and I learned long ago not to give a shit who's in there uh, yeah. excuse me that's all right just if, if I want to sing I'm going to sing and it turns out most people enjoy it you know I've had that's... very few people tell me shut up <laughs> uh, more often than not they'll join in yeah. or that hey can you do it and kind of joking around ask for a request but uh yeah, yeah the pe- definitely. The people that joke around about anybody singing like that, you know, the people that can't do it themselves. What did you do? Did you die? I think I tapped it. To, you can you can tap it. Oh, we can keep going. Oh, I try. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, anybody that that's 
gives you a hard time about about singing in 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 the open areas and and you know out and about are the ones that can't do it themselves so yeah they wish they can right exactly exactly um but uh so basically um so we have we have a little activity here uh that, that kristen came up with um so we wanted to come up with some top songs like a soundtrack of our life uh, so top songs kind of like from each i guess kind of time frame of our life or at least just top songs of you know throughout our life and kind of want to just go over what our what our top songs and our, and our soundtrack of our life is and and how these these songs were just a huge part of our life you know during you know during those times and and whatnot and so uh we kind of we put together a little list and, and we want to go over what our our life soundtrack, what our life soundtrack is. You can't hear me. Stand by. Stand by. It was working for a minute. I can't hear. It. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to go. Shoot. Mine works. Well, never mind. Okay. They might have died. I missed like the last two minutes. I'm so sorry. Just talking about okay. Your songs. What so we're gonna do, we're gonna do our your little activity, your soundtrack, your life yep. soundtrack. Yep, and it might make people think of what. what you had to make a soundtrack of your life. What are your must haves? And we, we made it hard. And I don't know if you just said this, but I said narrow it down to five, which are you kidding? This is so hard. It is, okay. it is. We love, but I tried to keep it, you know, we could go on for six months, but <laughs> you know? So I go first try. You go. Oh, shoot. We're doing okay. all just one at Some a time. Some of them are like, you want to go one and one and one? Oh, we can do that. Well, I, I see, I broke mine up in like kind of age groups. I have like early age, teenage, late teenage, early 20s, late 20s and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I kind of put mine in an order-ish too. And then I just stopped because I knew it was getting out of hand. <laughs> so, this one is huge from my childhood. Susu Studio by Phil Collins. You know that one? Yeah. The studio. Love it. Wind of Change by Scorpion. That was like late elementary, early middle school. And then in my reckless teenage years, when the levee breaks, Liz Eflin. Um, Reck reckless teenage reckless years. Teenage years. Um, parach uh, parachute by Guster. Yeah, that was like when we first got together. Um, I listened to it constantly. So that reminds me of that time. Mm -hmm. um, Fix You by Coldplay was a song um that I would sing I sang to Dylan when I was holding her in the hospital when it was when I was in the hospital right after I had her we just sat there and had nothing to do. I just sing to her little baby face so that's kind of been a song that's important that's that's one of those songs that is like yes I it's, it's, how do you even explain it it's like one of those like oh kind yes. of song. I was like hits you hits you yeah. right there oh yeah so the, good it's, it's, so a feel, it, it's a feel song for sure definitely, definitely. um I Could Hold You In My Arms by Ray LaMontagne. That's Maya's song that I would sing to her when she was a baby. Okay. Um, and the last one, which was tough to cut off, but Dog Days by Florence and the Machine. We mm -hmm. were friends that we always hung out with on the weekends and all the time in Arizona. And anytime that song came on, we all locked eyes and we would stop what we were doing and it was spontaneous dance stuff. <laughs> Spontaneous dance party wherever we were in their backyard no matter what Four. people were they, it was just the stars and the night sky we'd be out there dancing our heads off we'd be singing like crazy and then when they came to visit us in Hawaii we were camping out on the beach and that's and we we were like it's time we took that we took our music down to the beach and we had people that hadn't been there for you know they didn't live with us live in, in the town but they were close friends yeah and like, I guess this is what we do. And then they joined right and We were in the beach dancing around like fools to dog days. And it was just like the best. And anytime nice. they hear it, they like text us a picture of the song, you know, like, oh, it's on or whatever. So that's a huge song for in my world. Just one of the, it's one of, there's always one of those songs where it's just like you said, it, it turns on and everybody just clicks and it's just like, oh. Yeah, it didn't matter if we were in the middle of like the biggest conversation or we were eating or whatever, it was just like, well, you're obligated to get up and dance. I can imagine if you're like in a, like a grocery store or something and it goes on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Just start dancing in the grocery store. People are like, mm, what? Uh-huh. So, yeah, those are mine. There's so, so many more. Yeah. But I'd love to, at one point, really do this. I really would like to get a playlist and, and really set in. And I don't know how many songs it would end up to be, but. 300. Yeah. <laughs> 360 something a month. On your life playlist? Yeah. Oh, those don't all make the cut. <laughs> those aren't all good enough. <laughs> okay, your turn. My turn. Your turn. Get comfy. I think five songs is is undoable for a person that loves music. So I got <laughs> a few. I won't go through all of them. Toss them out there. But if we wanted to go through phases of life, well. My earliest memories of music were uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller on vinyl. I asked my father to buy, and my father was an infantry officer, and we were in Fort Benning, Georgia. He wasn't going to walk through the PX with Michael Jackson Thriller on vinyl under his arm. So I carried it, and he bought it for me. And I, I just remember that. Um, but Bon Jovi, Poison were huge when I was third grade ish. Mm -hmm. So, Lay Your Hands on Me by Bon Jovi and Nothing But a Good Time by Poison. Um, I don't think those would make my life playlist, playlist, but going through the phases like we're talking about. Yeah. Junior high, got into heavy metal. So anything Metallica pretty much uh, at that point. Then grunge started really kicking off with Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam, some Nirvana. Um, that's when I really started getting into really listening to music more other than just having it on at night when I would go to sleep or something. Cause that's when I started playing music. So mm -hmm. my real like top ones. Yeah. Uh, Lemon song by Led Zeppelin. By far my favorite Led Zeppelin song. Led Zeppelin's by far my favorite rock group. Um, so that's a huge one. Uh, green eyes by Coldplay. It's our wedding song. Um, neither of us have green eyes, but <laughs> Uh, that's beside the fact. Um, we got lost in Paris when we went to visit in went to Paris over a four day weekend um, back when we were first in Germany, and we did real good getting into Paris. Amazingly enough, with her navigating with a paper map. Um, it's a nightmare in, in the driving there. Hasn't happened, but. We got lost on the way out and we just blasting Nobody's Listening by Linkin Park off their third album. Um, just definitely my favorite Linkin Park song and just blasting that. I mean, nobody blasts music in Paris. I don't know if it's a no? good what, but it's not like here where anywhere you go, you're going to hear bass. So, and then the girls just love that song. It's a huge one for me. Uh, I got in a conversation with a, another father outside of Dylan's voice studio in Hawaii and talking about what's the best rock and roll song of all time, what sums up rock and roll. And I couldn't help but agree with him. I'm, I was dumbfounded. I couldn't think of anything. He said, all along the watchtower. Cool. And when he, when he explained it to me and I, I really stopped and thought about the song, like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what other song really does justice to classic rock like all along the watchtower. Um, I don't know if when I was younger, I would go out on trips with my father out out west, it was generally out west to climbing destinations, Boulder, Colorado, uh, Devil's Tower, Wyoming, you know, tons of different places we went to. And all we had was a four cylinder pickup truck with a cassette de a tape deck. And it basically like two tweeters that hung from the seat belts in your ears. So it was horrible. <laughs> oh but anytime you go into a, a rest stop, they'd have the, all the junky cassettes on a little spindle right by the cabin. And I'd sit there and I'd spin them around like, oh, what's this? And, I found Joe Cocker with a little help from my friends. And uh, I damn near wore that tape out listening to it one trip, memorized every song in a matter of days. And with a little help from my friends by Joe Cocker was definitely one of the best songs, I think. Got the best rock and roll scream in it by Joe Cocker. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm just, <laughs> um, Bombs Over Baghdad by Outkast. Gotta throw a rap song in because you know, we grew up with the birth of rap, basically. And yeah. Baghdad, I think, is one of the greatest rap songs ever written. Bullet in the Head, Rage Against the Machine, another one of the best rock and roll screams ever. Um, 
I could keep going. Dog Days is definitely on my list as well. Right. Buffalo's, Jack Johnson. Um, Desperado. I was never really a big fan of the song by the Eagles. Um, a buddy I played music with in college, JR, asked me to play it one night at a at a bar because his his girlfriend, fiance. They got, yeah, I think they got married. Um, it was her favorite song. So I played it and I started playing it more. And then I really, I don't know, at some point I just really fell in love with it. You know, it's funny how your tastes change over time. Uh, my songs that I, I loved growing up, I still love, but other songs like The Weight um, by the band, I never really, I knew it. I could play it. It's an easy song to play, easy classic rock song that, you know, most people know, but I never really enjoyed it. Never really fell in love with it until just like the last couple of months. Uh, I don't know where I heard it, but it came on and I just started belting it out. And next thing I know, it's on my life playlist on my phone and I'm belting it out in the shower at work. Yeah. <laughs> a great damn song. Yep. And uh, just to throw a little, just about anything sublime, um, anything Jack Johnson, but throw a little wrench and all that. It had to be you, Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. Just one of the greatest, I think, real love songs. Like, I know you got some problems. and I know I got some problems, but there's nobody else for me out there. You know, it's you. Even with all your faults and all mine, it's you. Yeah. What about right now? What's your, what's your go-to song this time, like right now? Right now? Right, right this very moment. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You don't know? You don't have a song right now? What do you mean? I think what's your a song that you would want to hear right now? It would be the oh, yes. Right? Is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah, like what's what's your go-to song right now? Like these days. Uh, I love anything Bob Marley. Mellow mood always, always uh just puts me in a mellow mood. You know, um, any any Bob Marley, I think, can if, if Bob Marley can't cheer you up at least the tiniest little bit, pull you out of something, then you're not a true music lover. Um, <laughs> right? Now, uh, probably out loud, Dispatch. That's a good one I've been listening to lately. Okay. Another band that I don't know how we didn't know where they were back in the day. We didn't find them until she found them on Jam On, right? Oh, dispatch. Yeah. Oh, uh, what? Who? What? <laughs> that was really good. Ooh, Pirate Looks at Forty would probably be mine. My Pirate ultimate. The, the, a Pirate Looks at Forty, the Jack Johnson Eddie Vedder version. Dave uh, Matthews. Uh, Matthews. Eddie Vedder. Eddie, Jack Johnson. Dave Matthews. Dave Matthews. Yeah. Eddie Vedder does what? that uh, constellation. So good. So good. Not the so Jimmy good. version. All right. I mean, he did write. We took up a lot of time. <laughs> it's fine. I, right. I liked I liked that Joe mentioned the Desperado one though because it, it shows that even if you don't necessarily like a song at first, seeing the important it has to some other people, you know, somebody else can make you then like that song yourself. And it was I was that was a really cool story. I'm glad you you shared that one. Um, if I I'm sorry, but if if I had to just pick five though. I don't know what the four would be, but the fifth one would be blank. I do know that. Blank? Yeah. I would not round out my list because I don't know what's to come. Well, yeah. So I would always leave an extra round in the chamber for whatever might whatever might come down the pipe. You know, it's they might uncover some unpublished Lincoln Park song that pipe. was recorded. It's the pipe. The pipe. <laughs> no. Comes down the pipe. <laughs> I'm still trying to teach him how to speak. It's okay. Teach him how to speak. <laughs> nice. What are yours? What are mine? Okay. So um Kristen helped me with, with my youngest years one. Uh, <laughs> she, she she mentioned one and it instantly was like, yep, yeah, that's that's my young years one. Uh Moni Moni. Moni Moni was my was my song when I was a little a little guy. Um yep, Moni Moni. About the pony. <laughs> yeah. It's the pony song, Dad. Yeah, I always, always be asked for it. Always be listening to it. Um, 
I, I remember even when I was in college, you would always you would always bring up something about Moni Moni. Like if I would say like what's your favorite song or whatever, whatever we were talking about music or whatever, you're like, oh Moni Moni, Moni Moni. So that was, I guess, what everybody else remembered me by as well in those young years. But uh uh kind of young teen years, um, I guess maybe just all throughout teen years, uh, I was big on sticks. So when, <laughs> I didn't know that. Really? Oh, yeah. Renegade. I think my my favorite those years was uh, too much time on my hands though. <laughs> uh, too much time on my hands. So basically, the story behind Sticks and those years uh, when we would go on vacations, it would be the the album, the Sticks out greatest hits album would be the, the album that we would play in the car at least once. Anytime we would take a trip, and my dad and I would just was absolutely get into it, just singing the whole song word for word. And it just, for me growing up, it was just a huge part of my life. And to this day, I still actually think that that great, that greatest hits sticks album is actually my favorite album. Um, I absolutely love it. I think, I think the, the sentimental value it has kind of plays a part, but even just listen to all the songs, they're such good songs. They're so good. Um, so throughout those years that I will go with too much time on my hands by sticks, uh, college years, you know, like 18 through 22 or whatever. Um, I was big on Iris by Goo Goo Dolls. Yeah. I would, I would always listen to Iris on Goo Goo Dolls. Always just, oh, it was one of, it was one of those songs. Just, oh, this song is so good. I love it. And when it would turn, I mean, it would come on and just, I would get super, super pumped up and it's not really a pump up song, but somehow it would pump me up. And um, just, yeah, having that, Throughout I those, how'd it go? I can't hear it in my head. I can't either. I keep hearing name. Whatever. Um, how does it start now? See, I can't even think. I'm blanking now too. <laughs> On the spot. Is it? Yeah, right. <laughs> Sounds like a Christmas song. <laughs> um, name. A name. I don't know. You have you'll have to look it up after. I, I'm, we look, we look. I'm totally blanking now too. Um, that was that was just a huge one for me through those years, uh, no doubt. Uh, but an honor, honorable mention in in college. Um, kind of kind of a funny funny thing though. But um, when I'd be sitting in my room and sometimes I'd leave my door open or whatever. And when I was in the, in the fraternity house. And so just in, in with a group of, a group of, of gentlemen and uh, I'm sometimes I would listen to Celine Dion while I was like doing <laughs> homework or something. <laughs> or I just had a couple songs. Cause I think I would, I would put all my, all my parents' music on my, on my uh, iTunes account and everything too, just cause like, you know, I want all the music available. And so every once in a while, I'd have a Celine Dion song play, and somebody would come walking past my door and be like, "Yeah, yeah nice song, yeah." I can imagine. And I was like, "Thanks." <laughs> I did the same. We'd have all of the kids' music on our iTunes, and then I never really filtered anything when it when I would sync the iPod. And uh, I remember I'm in the gym at Fort Riley, Kansas, doing bench press, and I hear, and I'm I'm I'm, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> And I'm, you know, whatever. I'm like, the wheels on the bus. <laughs> or luckily I didn't have the clamps on, so I could just rotate it and drop the weights off. I'm like, why is wheels on the bus playing on my iPod when I'm trying to like right after like bronze band or something? Yeah. Era. Like here's wheels on the bus. Like, all right, yep. I need to uncheck some stuff. <laughs> need a workout playlist. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, when, if I was younger, I think I would have been more embarrassed about it. But at that point in my life, I kind of realized, whatever. It doesn't it, matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> after college years, um, I, I was big on Start of Something Good by Daughtry, um, who is my favorite artist. Uh, Start of Something Good is you know, kind of in the title. Basically, it's just, um, for me, it was... I would always listen to it and I would always get excited about, you know, if uh, at that time I had, I had just met my girlfriend. And so I was like, this is the start of something good, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I moved out. Um, yeah, the start of the start of my life kind of thing. And it just, it, I would always listen to it. And it always, it would always hit me hard. 
uh, right in the feels and just was, uh, it was just, it was just my song during that time. It was just me being excited about what's next. Like kind of Joe said with the, with the blank thing um, for me, it, it's, if the word start of something good, it was just, I know I'm just getting started kind of thing. You know, I, I'm, I'm nowhere near where I'm going to be. And I just want to keep pushing forward. And it's just the start of something good. So that was my, that was my song um, for those years. And then now um, with me getting more, more in touch, I guess you could say with, with my religious side, even more um, I've been big on you say by Lauren Daigle. Um, she is a lot of people probably don't know her. She's kind of, she is a Christian singer. Um, but she's extremely talented and her songs. They're not, they're, you know, a lot of people, I think when you, when you hear Christian songs or Christian singers, a lot of people just think, Oh, it's like just church music. And it's really not. Um, it's their normal songs. who just kind of talk about Jesus and, and other, and other you know, stuff. But, um, the you say song, um, basically, talks about how even when you're not feeling like you're enough to God, you are, you're, you're so important. And, um, you know, just kind of like you are so important to me and just, you need to know your worth as well. Kind of, kind of thing. And that song, uh, especially when I, when I start to feel a little bit down or just not happy enough with, with who I am. I, I, you know, listen to that song and it's just like, you know what, I, I'm okay. Um, and I, I just, I'm content with, with who I am and where I'm going. And it just, it just brightens, brightens up my day. Mm-hmm. That's kind of my song right now. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I think you sent me that song. I have to listen to it. Again. Did I? I think so. Yeah. It's a good song. And I, and I kind of got you speaking of the, like the Christian music, um, the freaking country. I think I, I sent you that that yeah. band too. Yeah. So they yeah, yeah they have their, yeah they have their Christmas stuff, but they also have you know not Christmas stuff too, and it's it's just as good. It's it's very good. But um, yeah, I, that if I had to narrow it down, at least that's what I came up with. Like you said, it's hard to only get five songs, um, but those are the ones that stuck out uh, throughout throughout life. And Joe, I like that. I like the whole blank concept thing. Um, just going forward, you never know what's going to come out. You never know what's going to hit you and, and influence you as far as songs. Um, but at least this is this is what we've got up to this point as far as songs that have that have touched us and, and been influential in our life. So fun little activity. I like that, Chris. That was a good idea. Thanks. Good idea. A life soundtrack. A yeah. Life soundtrack. And there's never, it doesn't feel like there's ever enough time to explore all the music that's out there, you know? Mm-hmm. I, he, he likes to listen to a lot of the same stuff, like, because he loves it, you know, it makes sense. But I'm always like, There's, don't you want to explore? There's so much stuff out here we've never even heard of. And, and, and even different genres that you don't even, you know, it's just, it's just so cool. And it's so amazing that there's so much out there. And I just never want to stop exploring. That's why, I like, his blank thing is great, because my whole thing could veer dramatically and go off in a whole other direction, you know. As I get into my older years, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, music yeah. is is just so vast. It's just like you said, there's so much. You always have your your groups and your artists and your songs and whatnot. But but like you said, there's always new stuff coming out. There's always stuff that you may not know about that if you explore a little bit, you could find somebody new that you're just like, wow, that is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take the time. Take the time to to explore a little bit on you know on your musical horizon and. Uh, see what else you can find absolutely absolutely all right so which now leaves us to our bright stories of the week all right so i have one that um (laughs) kind of a weird one so um i don't know have you guys had any any snow there yet out there in nashville we had a very light dusting friday okay nothing enough to really talk about it's stuck in our garden that's about it (laughs) Nice. Uh, so we have, we've had a couple of, of decent snowfalls. And um, so it, it was like a week or so, honestly, a week or so after a big snowfall. And, but with the, the plows and how they push the, the snow and like parking lots and stuff. So we was at work and so we were at work. And so the, you know, there's a big pile of snow on one of the parking spots. 
well, not, not huge, not like five feet or anything like that, but you know, a couple of feet. And for some reason, this, this older lady decided that she was going to try to park because that's her normal parking spot. You know, what? people, people, uh-huh. lo- people love her, their parking spots and always have to park in their parking spot. Yes. <laughs> but she decides to try to park in this spot on the pile of snow and gets herself stuck. So we come out at the end of the day and she's stuck. And I, well, I, I come out a little bit later and I, I see a group of people kind of gathered around her car. I was like, what the heck's going on? Could she not get her car started? What's, you know, what's happening here? And so I, I kind of I throw my stuff in my car and I come back over and I say, you know, what's, what's going on? And she didn't, they're like, well, she's stuck. <laughs> she's stuck on this pile of snow. And so there's a, just a group of people, a uh, group of gentlemen there trying to get her out of this uh, pile of snow. And we're having no luck whatsoever. She's absolutely stuck. We're pushing the car. We're, we're like, hey, turn the wheels, turn the wheel, try to loosen up, try to forward, back, anything, just not even budging at all. So um, eventually a couple other guys, you know, like well, we got to, we got to take off. But um, myself, again, another young gentleman and another, uh, another guy, we're just, we're sitting there. We're probably, we're probably there half hour trying to get this lady out of, out of this parking spot. And eventually, I mean, we're, we're, trying like the mat technique, trying to put the mat under there, trying to get some traction on the wheels, shot it right out. Um, eventually we started looking, <laughs> eventually we started looking underneath the car at this pile of snow. And, it, and eventually it, it really, actually it shouldn't say snow because it was ice. It was basically just a chunk of ice under her car. And we think that it lodged itself underneath like her, either her axle or something. It was, we think it was jacking her car up off the ground. So her wheel wasn't even, literally wasn't even like touching the pavement. Oh, so we're eventually, God. we were just trying to like, we're like trying to find any kind of tool we could find. We're trying to like dig at the ice underneath there. She had uh, wiper fluid in her car. So we're like taking wiper fluid, trying to like chuck it under there, see if we can melt anything at all. Nothing. Um, one of the, one of the uh, supervisors come out and they're like, grab a bag of salt or something. Try to throw in salt under there. Nothing. I mean, it, there was- Wait, a- did you say a packet of salt? A bag of salt, sorry. Oh, oh. That was like, like a rib no. packet you put on your no. <laughs> I was like, no, that guy's an idiot. He's not a- uh, Yeah, we're taking we're taking little packets of salt from, from co- making coffee and throwing it. Yeah. No. Coffee? Uh, salt in your coffee? Yeah. In the lunchroom. Are you guys all right? Where do you work? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we're all losing it. Yeah. Yeah. Salt in your coffee. Yeah, definitely. But no, it's normal, you know, the, the pavement salt. Yeah, 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 yeah I got it now. Um, so we tried that, and there's nothing worked, nothing worked. So eventually she called AAA, and we found out the next day that they came and, and pulled her out or whatever. And But just the, the dedication for a handful of, of us who, who were doing what we could to try to get this lady out of the pile of ice. Yeah. Uh, it was ridiculous. In the freezing cold, I'm sure you were. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cold pretty cool but just the I think the, what, what kind of was was cool to me is the the inventiveness that, that we all had is literally we're just grabbing whatever we can find in our cars and trying to dig her out and trying to melt her out and anything we could it was oh, pretty, man. pretty fun hot water maybe did, was there, did you have access to any well probably not hot water right? I honestly don't even think anything would have, would have helped she was so really? yeah it was like it almost seemed like as we kept looking underneath it almost looked like the ice was like starting to form around her axle and stuff it was <laughs> it was nuts so was, question are you guys so limited on parking that she had to go to this place not really there was other spots <laughs> i mean we don't have a ton of extra ones but there's still there's definitely still plenty of other spots <laughs> that she could have went to lesson learned she was just determined it's not like she you know she had this little car this little sedan honestly if if she backed in she might have been better off because yeah. of the, you know the, the four-wheel drive forward wheel drive i'm said four wheel drive but um yeah she, she just totally stuck and but guys you know just they saw that she was stuck and jumped jumped up right away and tried to help her tried to do what we could so. yeah that's great because you guys could have been like oh i'm gonna put on my heat my little seat heaters and i'm gonna go home and get cozy but no you stayed out in the cold and tried to pry it out <laughs> tried to pry yeah literally tried to hack away at the ice and get her out but so, awesome. yep. yep. What about you? You guys got a story? Oh, yeah. We, um, I had a soldier. He, uh, 
PTSD out of the army, out of active duty. He went to the active guard reserve. Um, PTS. He left the army. He, <laughs> his, he did his time. He got out. He um, he'd been in for a little bit, and he, he was a single soldier, but he had two cars because every soldier needs a Mustang, apparently, or a Camaro or a Charger, yeah, um, and a pickup truck. So he needs help getting his his other car. You know, and his pickup truck is already full and it has a, a U-Haul trailer on it full of his stuff. And then he's got his Mustang. So I had another soldier volunteer um, put in, give him, give him a four-day pass. And he helped trailer the other soldier's car all the way up to Pennsylvania. We're here in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And he drove all the way up to Pennsylvania, dropped the guy's car off for him, and drove all the way back down with no, no compensation. Um, just did it because they were, they were good friends, you know almost family and uh, yeah, didn't even really have to ask. There were multiple guys willing to do it and he was just the one who was most available really. Uh, so. Nice. When a, when a friend needs help, you help him. You know, no questions asked. You just pick up and just whatever you can to help. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. That's not an easy thing moving. Uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot to handle. Yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit, a little bit about that. Yeah, a little bit of experience in that in that uh, field. <laughs> Never move myself again. Ever. <laughs> no, you got to come back over this way one more time. One yeah, but we won't do it ourselves. We'll uh, I got you. From the other house to this house ourselves. No. Never again. Never again. No. <sighs> nice. Very good. I like that. It's a good story. It's a good story. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. Well, I think that about wraps it up then. Thank you guys so much for joining. Yeah, Thank it was you. fun. Thanks for having us. <laughs> you bet. You bet. Lots of lots of good stuff on music. And we can tell you can tell that, that music means a lot to us. Definitely. Yeah. And if anybody out there adds thinks of their songs of life, let us know. Yeah. Yeah, um, we're all we're all intrigued just to hear uh, what are your 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 big songs, your your go-to songs, you know, your different stages of life. What's your what's your life soundtrack? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Be sure to comment. Let us know. We'll, we'll talk about it. So, all right, guys. Um, thanks again. Appreciate it. And, uh, you know, to you guys, make sure you have a wonderful and bright week. Um, you know, if possible, follow us on, on social media, follow Bright Connections. Uh, leave, a, leave a like on the, on the YouTube channel. Uh, to make sure you subscribe and uh, we'll keep this going. We'll keep on, keep on spreading the brightness. Keep on having fun with this and, and hopefully connecting people in these, in these times, in these crazy times. And uh, hopefully just, just continue to influence you guys and, and inspiring you to, to continue to, to do good out in the world, to continue to, to share brightness and, and keep the world in a good place. So again, have a wonderful week, a bright week, make it a good one. And we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.